The play-in is what's next for the Sacramento Kings. The Pelicans absolutely toyed with the Kings in the fourth quarter. Toyed with them. Got any shot they wanted. Made their threes. When Zion Williamson wanted to go to the basket, nobody could stop him. Nobody could guard the three. Open three after open three after open three. Then they try to double a player. One swing pass. All of a sudden, you have a three-on-one or a two-on-one leading to a dunk. And again, when Zion Williamson came back into the game after, you know, C.J. McCollum. You called it. Three after three after three. Zion toyed with the Kings. It was like man against a boy on the court. You know what? The Kings couldn't beat the Pelicans under any circumstances. Not they just they can't beat them. They they're 0 and 5 against them this year. And not yeah, even, it, hey, Ryan, not even close for any of the games. Not even close. Not even close. This it's a great point, Grant. I would say at best tonight the the Kings traded baskets with the Pelicans. So you're right. They did toy with them. Anytime you force 10 turnovers between De'Aaron Fox and Domas, not going to be a good night for the Kings. I mean, I don't even know what else to say. You, you had pulled it within two at one point in the second half. Okay. Well, I do. I think I figured something out about this team tonight. They did not. It's this, Grant, and stop me if you want or cut me off if you disagree. This team has not played in a ton of close games. We saw it from the start of the season. The second this team gets into a position where they close a gap more times than not, they panic, Grant. They panic. They played like there was two minutes left on the clock when there was nine in the fourth quarter. Amen. Could not agree with you more. This team is so, it's almost like Mike Brown has a rule that you have to shoot the ball eight seconds into the clock. I mean, the offense is so rushed, right? I mean, so rushed. And I understand you want to play fast, and I get that. But during critical stretches of the game, the shot selection is not high percentage. No. And then what happens? You you you're right back on defense against a team that you can't stop. Exactly, Grant. What did Jerry Reynolds talk about yesterday a lot on our show? He talked a lot about not being able to stop Zion, right? That's one thing, but he also talked as you did about shot selection and getting no. into the bonus. I'm taking heat online because I said the Kings lost this game at the end of the third quarter and the start of the fourth. You get a De'Aaron Fox technical. Mm -hmm. You get Chris Duarte, who comes off the bench while the Kings are in the penalty, Grant. In the penalty. He shoots two threes. The Kings only take two free throws from the six-minute point on. What are you doing? That's fundamental, Grant. Pull guys out. Put somebody in that's going to go to the hoop. I saw one positive in the game tonight and only one positive. Keegan Murray finally found his shot in the fourth quarter. Other than that, I don't see any positives at all in this game. Zero positives. Well, I take that back. I thought Davion Mitchell played very well. Uh, Davion played very well. And here's the other positive, Grant. I'm going to go hot take and I'm going to stand by it. De'Aaron Fox rolled his left ankle at the end of the 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 game. Yep. Sit his ass out until the play-in game. You do not play him again until the play-in. Well, the problem with that is you might be 9 or 10, and instead of winning one game, you have to win two games. But, Grant, if you only can get one game out of De'Aaron's ankle, ankles he's had problems with all season, his entire career, you got to bet it on one and not two. But in all fairness, after he rolled his ankle, when he stepped on the defender's foot after the basket— uh, he seemed to be running just fine at the end of the game. Uh, I, I see. I, I saw it differently. He took that last three that New Orleans hit on the swing. Uh-huh. It's because De'Aaron went for a backdoor steal. We call it a fake hustle play, basically, which he was completely out of position. He couldn't get back into position, but he was dragging that leg a little bit, in my opinion. Well, we'll see. You know, again, yeah, no worry doubt. about that tomorrow. Uh, the re- the, he- here's the bottom line. You're not, you're not a, a, a playoff team right now. You are either seven, eight, or you're gonna have to play in the nine, ten game. And uh, I don't, I don't think the Kings are beating the Suns tomorrow. 
I don't I don't think they're beating the Suns tomorrow with or without the Aaron Fox. So that means it may come down to the Blazers game. Why would I think that the Kings are going to beat the Blazers when at home this year I've seen them lose to Detroit, Charlotte, right? I mean, I can go on and on. I, why, why would I think they're going to beat the Blazers? Uh, you wouldn't. And again, it's an early game. I know everybody plays early. But Grant, yep. look what the Pelicans did to the Kings tonight. I would say if you look at the Suns when they're healthy, their backcourt's much better than the Pelicans' backcourt. And the yep. Pelicans' backcourt was able to spread the Kings out tonight and put their on ball defense on blast. That's why there was so much space. I'll tell you this if Monty McNair is not watching this game and trying to say to himself, New Orleans is a team that I got to beat next year, one of the teams. Yeah. And, and there's nobody on my team that can even come close to man, manning up with Zion Williamson. That's number one on my shopping list. Well, okay? Grant, to, to be fair, wouldn't they be on the list last year at the yeah, end of they the should season? Have been on, yeah, they, they, they should have been. But, I mean, Zion Williamson, I mean, he's <laughs> I, I know he's good, and I'm I'm not trying to take anything away from him. But Ryan, he looked like a man going against school kids when he Napes. had the ball. Right? Napes, I mean, Napes, come on. Napes, have you ever tried to run after a bowling ball while it's on its way down the lane? <laughs> That's kind of what it's like chasing Zion uh, Williamson. Um, and poor Keon Ellis, you saw him take a hard charge. I actually uh, thought that should have been a play Mike Brown challenged. He didn't, and... Again, that fourth quarter, he was so Grant careful about calling timeouts, adjusting up until then, and then he let him play in the fourth, Napes. Well, this is a uh, awful, awful night if you're a Sacramento Kings fan. And if you have an awful situation at home with plumbing, that I can help you with. I can't <laughs> help you with the Kings, but I can help you with a plumbing company. They are great. I'm talking about New Works Plumbing. If you go to sacserviceplumbing.com, or you call the number on your screen, they'll be there for you 24-7 for all of your plumbing needs and repairs. That's sacserviceplumbing.com, New Works Plumbing. They've got a fix for you. The Pelicans, um, this is a team. Now, I, I understand the Kings don't have Herder and Monk, and I'm not, I'm not forgetting about that. Yeah. How good are the Pelicans in terms of matchups? They beat Sacramento this year in a game – Without McCollum, okay, they destroyed Sacramento tonight in the biggest game of the year without Brandon Ingram. They don't even need to be at full strength to beat Sacramento. Yeah. It's such a good point, Grant. They didn't even have Brandon Ingram. Um, it's coaching to a degree. Yep. Uh, their, coach, their coach puts them in the right spots, and he's using the personnel correctly that he has. And the game plan tonight was beautiful from a Pelican sense. And if you want to yep. talk to the Pelicans and them having any success in the playoffs, they answered a lot of runs tonight by the Kings, hard runs to answer, especially when the crowd got behind the Kings. And you make a good point about Fox. Um, I'm not so sure. Again, I, they'll make an evaluation on that, but with or without Fox, you look at all the minutes played and the, 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 how flat the Kings were at the beginning of this game and, and the fact that the Suns aren't playing tonight. And the Suns still, you know, they've got a lot to play for. And even if they don't end up six, they certainly want to host a playoff game as opposed – I personally, if I'm Sacramento, send, go on the road. I, I This team to me is better on the road than they are at home. I'd be just fine with the Kings being at Phoenix. I actually would say I'd give them a 50-50 chance or more to win that game in Phoenix at home. I'm not as confident. Yeah, and my confidence, yeah, it's a great point. My confidence tomorrow night is not terrible because of who they're playing. The Suns can be very inconsistent like the Kings. And, you know, the Suns, maybe they look at this game tonight. They're like, Pelicans blew them out. We can shoot threes better than them. De'Aaron's hurt, maybe. You know, maybe they come in a little big-headed. But I'm with you. The Kings just need to be on the road probably. It doesn't work at home. Very disappointing, though, if you're a Kings fan. Uh, everyone had been pointing to this game for a long time. Long. This time. game, ever since we really kind of figured out the four teams that were fighting for, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, right? And yeah. we pointed these this game and tomorrow's game. But, you know, you're down 20-plus points in the fourth quarter, 
All right. And then the Kings, I think, went on a 9-0 run, Ryan, if I'm not mistaken. They made three Correct. consecutive threes and the crowd got it. But, you know, the game was over. I mean, you know, it would have taken a miracle, a miracle at that point. The Kings were getting blown out in the biggest game of the year on their home court in the fourth quarter. Like, digest that for a moment. Yeah, it's tough to because um, there's a lot of places you want to pick apart. But at the end of the day, I think we're holding a team to a higher standard than what they really are, Grant. I mean, we're comparing them to a team that we thought should be in the Western Conference Finals this year coming off of last year. And they're just not that good. But at the end of the day, they're in a position to retool if they want to. They're not necessarily in a bad spot with the new CBA, Napes. Well, we'll see. You know, um, we'll, we'll see the there's a lot that's going to have to be done I, I i think the 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 task at hand right now is to make the playoffs i mean let's not blow this out of proportion i'm not this team may not be in the playoffs this team may not make it to the playoffs we have to come to that realization you know there's just because you know you now have to go to the play and who says you're going to win that you you might not win that so um I, and i'm just telling you I, I i've said this all along this would be a big step back for this franchise, in my opinion, if they're not one of the top eight playoff teams. I I agree with you, Napes. They only had, uh, they only had, they had no blocks tonight. The Kings, no blocks. Is that a product of the matchup or a product of the game plan? Or a little it's bit a of product a of the personnel. I, to me, I don't think so. I had a fundamental problem with the doubles on Valashunas, even Stupid. early why? on. What, 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 why? What, Grant, why would you? Why? Why I would don't, you double him, Rhino? What? What? On why? What game plan is it that you would double Valanciunas? That doesn't make any sense. Usually, it's because you want the ball out of that guy's hand, or you want the other team. You want to get the ball into their role players' hands and get them to make an open shot, but. No, Grant, you got Alex Len. That is exactly why he's on the roster. So I guess it, it feels like the Kings go into these games where they feel like there might be a mismatch. They go in assuming there's a mismatch. They don't feel it out. They come out um, very defensive as opposed to aggressive, and that would be a play there. Who else, Grant? I mean, can you imagine another player like Valanciunas in your time calling the game that you saw double that consistently? Especially against a team that shoots the three the way this team yes. shoots. Why would you double him and Great have point. one? All, of, all it takes then is one quick pass to get to an open three. I mean, the Pelicans from downtown tonight looked like they were in practice. Great. I mean, it, it, was it was like that all four meetings. All four meetings this season, the Pelicans have shot, I believe it was right around 44% from yes. beyond the three-point line. So yeah. when I'm looking at this matchup, it's like, let That's them right. beat you inside. You, you they, keep them inside. Yes, period. Rhino, Rhino. They were 22 of 40 tonight from three. And out of those threes, out of the 22 makes, how many were contested? I mean, Nine. every time I was... I mean, not many. Not as many as normal. You're absolutely right. And here's been another point of contention, Napes. And I know a lot didn't go down. The Kings, they go 16 to 38. They only shoot 38 tonight. Do you have a problem with that number? Do I have a problem with them shooting only 38 threes? No, just 30. Um, they, they shot 58 before in Oklahoma City, which is far too much. 38 to me feels like a right number, even though they didn't convert tonight. What about you? Yeah, you know, I I'm okay with that number because your two best three point shooters aren't in uniform. So to me, you shouldn't be shooting mm -hmm. uh, the the same volume of threes because you don't have as good enough shooters on the floor. I mean, yeah. I also feel that the the game against Oklahoma City, I'm not taking anything away from Keon Ellis because he was tremendous, but he made sure. eight of them. That, that's an aberration. Yeah, it, absolutely, absolutely. So the, the numbers were a little deceitful in the Oklahoma City game because of that. I mean, you know, if you look at tonight, for instance, all right, if you look at what Ellis did, he was one of three. Now, think about that. He made eight against Oklahoma City. He only took three tonight and made one, you know. So but that, that's who he is. That's more of his game. So I think the numbers the other evening were a little misleading. Okay, I think that's fair. Mike Brown actually came out before the game tonight and addressed it. He had a three- or four-minute quote. We'll uh, recap it tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I'm with you. And Davion Mitchell, is this an aberration? Is this who Davion Mitchell can be? Well, I would say this. Davion's now been doing this over a long enough stretch in big games that 
maybe this is who he has developed into mm. as he wraps up his third season. Okay, I, I, that's the way I would look at that. You know, yeah, and he's made a lot out of a tough situation in terms of the system when Mike Brown came here because that was not what Davion was doing in college. Well, and he might be starting tomorrow if Fox doesn't go. You might have a starting backcourt of Davion Mitchell and Keon Ellis. It's a great point. Hey, Michael, we saw you drop off. If you want to call back, you can. Con Dog, we got you waiting. Also, J Cal, we got you waiting as well. But first, you know, um, I'm going to take a little something off Napes's plate. You know, I, I'm going to I'm going to do a live read. You know, Napes, it's a uh, it's brunch season. You know about this. Bennett's West Side Grill in Rockland. That's their newest location located in the Blue Oaks Town Center. We talked about that last season. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com right now. You can check out their other locations, specials, brunch specials. Uh, two entrees, bottle of champagne, 44 bucks. And Mother's Day, Napes, Mother's yep. Day is coming up. Yes. So make sure. Sure, you take care, of Mama, on Mother's Day. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com for more on their other locations, gift cards, menus, and much more. Huge thanks to them. You know what? I'm really impressed. I I'm very impressed at that read. I'm going to give that. Oh, I'm going to be a Dave Portnoy on his pizza review, and <laughs> um, I'm going to go. Everyone knows the rules. Just one bite. Just one uh, bite. Everyone knows the rules. You only get one chance to read that live. I thought that was outstanding. I, I'm going to give you a 9.1 on that read. No way. With yeah, your grading system? I, you had energy, energy, which is important. You had good oh, inflection. Boy. You mentioned all the facts. You you hit on the brunch. You gave me the special with the champagne and the price and everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving you a 9.1. That was a very good read. I love it. Thanks, Napes. I, you know what that means? I got to work up to a 9-2 because I'm telling you, the Bowling Green grading is not easy from this guy. So, <laughs> Hey, if I can graduate from college with near a, a near 3.0, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I did too, you know. I was, I think, what did I, well, I don't want to. That's actually, a good. I, you know what? I was a little further. I was, I graduated uh, with a, my final grade point was 2.82. That's, That's, you know. Napes, yeah. you you were interning, you were working, you were yeah. playing. Hey, a lot of people don't realize you played lacrosse. This guy yeah. played a lot of lacrosse. Hey, we want to get you guys in on the action tonight. Condog, we're coming to you in a second. But J Cal, welcome into if you don't like that with Grant and Rhino. Hey, Grant, big fan. Get, yeah, we got you. Thank you. Awesome. Um, well, what, what was not awesome was that. Game. Talk, can you yeah, speak a little louder, huge. please? Uh, yes, can you that's me? much better. Thank you. Okay. Uh, tonight's game was total trash. I feel bad for everyone who attended that game on national TV. And let's not ignore the fact that Brandon Ingram did not play also. Yeah. And I want to uh, make a point. Uh, in the third quarter, the Kings had like a little run going. Why the hell is Chris Dorte hitting, trying to hit threes? Been talking about it for two weeks. Well, it's here's the deal. Thing. Here's the deal, really quick. Duarte got those minutes because Grant's talked about Colby Jones and some of the other guys. Once tape gets on him, getting exposed, Colby had a cold or a, a carrying violation within a minute of being on the floor. So that's why yep. you probably didn't see him in the second half. Yeah, I see. Well, you know, two more games. Let's see what happens, guys. Amen. Yeah. Well, it really doesn't matter what happens now. I mean, other than the fact, that, are you going to be playing at home or playing on the road? I guess it matters. You, you yeah. don't want to fall to nine or ten, and that—that that is, you know, you also have to understand. You know, if the Kings lose tomorrow, they may have to win against Portland not to be a ninth seed. Yeah, and you would hate to face the Warriors. That's well. If you play the Warriors, you're not going to the playoffs. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, no. I'm gonna call Definitely it the way not. it is. If you have to beat the Warriors in a one game winner take all, you're not winning. You're not beating Steph Curry in a one game playoff. You're just not. No way, no way. Especially if that game is in. Uh, I don't care. Francisco. I don't care if the game is in New York on the moon, <laughs> over in yep. Asia, Europe. I don't care. You're not beating Steph Curry in a one game. Give me a second here. To no. Plug in yeah, my, uh, I agree. Computer again. All right. All right, guys. Hey, have we a good appreciate night. appreciate the call, J. Cal. Um, a lot of comments going on about Sabonis, his game. Grant, there's one that stuck out to me about yeah. this. 
Where do you what do you think about this? If you had to say 10 is extremely accurate and one is not, what would you rate that? About this comment right here? Yep. We oh, lack I, basketball knowledge all around from coaches to players. Well, I, I think that's absurd. This is the NBA. We're talking about the, okay. the best of the best. Uh, I think their basketball knowledge is very high. So on a scale of one to 10, I, I think you're way off base with that. I, I Again, let's not – listen, I understand the Kings lost, and I understand it's been a rough stretch, but let's not discredit the greatest league in the world with the best players in the world and coaches that have been doing this for most of their adult life. It's not like they woke up this morning and forgot how to play and how to coach. So I think we need to be careful here. I understand people are disappointed. I understand people are upset, but lack of knowledge? No, I come on now. Yeah, it's not lack of knowledge, but I think there is something, and we talked about it yesterday with adjustments, that if you compare the adjustments the Kings make and some of the decision-making they make at certain times in the game, yes. it doesn't add up compared to other basketball teams in the NBA. If you use Okay, but Mike Brown, who was the unanimous coach of the year mm -hmm. last season, didn't all of a sudden in the offseason forget how to coach and no. forget how to run a team. No. I, I grant, I think that this is going to be a very telling off season from what Agreed. we find out from inside that building, because somebody's had a tough ride of it. Is it the coach? Yes. Is it the front office? Is it yes. players? We don't know, yes. but we're sure as hell going to find out. I said this, correct me if I'm wrong, two months yeah. ago, maybe more, maybe a little less, that if the Kings did not qualify for the playoffs, there would be big changes in mm -hmm. the off season. And I'm sticking with that. Amen. Nate, sticking to it. Uh, we bring in Condog. Welcome on to the show. We'll get to Zach in a minute. But Condog, how you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing good. So first things first, I owe uh, my friend this, Jordan. He is a big fan. He misses you calling games, Grant. He told me thank to you. shout out. I appreciate that. And thank you, Jordan, for your support. Appreciate it. So uh, Condog, um, any any positives you're taking out of this, buddy? Uh Hopefully Keegan Murray has found his three point shot. I mean, yeah, he, he, yeah. The, but uh, I I feel the same way as the guy throwing uh, chicken wings down at the arena uh, late in the game. You know, and yeah. How that that's awful, by the way. I got to tell you, that's awful. Yeah, I mean, no way to behave like that in a game. I mean, we had a whole malice at the palace incident because of that terrible beer 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 thrown on Ron Artest. You know, too much yeah. booze. It's it's yeah. probably too much booze. We've seen issues around courtside with that before. But yeah. And by the way, yeah. thank goodness for Kevin Harlan on the call for a change and Amen. having a professional announcer. You know. Oh, I love Kevin Harlan. Amazing. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, he, he make he makes the game worth watching you know i mean the guy is great I, and he's also a great human being i have the utmost respect for him and maybe i'm being a little biased because i like him so much as a person but you know what when he's on the call it's like oh thank god you know yeah um so yeah um <laughs> then not looking forward to either playing the warriors or the Suns or pelican whoever we play in the play and i'm not that's a lot of matchups i don't want to see um, the Lakers is the only one I would want to see just, just due to the fact that Sabonis just finds ways to yep. be fantastic against yep. Davis. Yep. That and they're the playing, uh, the, the Lakers are playing better, uh, but they're now even in the loss column. So understand what we're talking about here. The Warriors, the Kings and the Lakers all have 35 losses. Okay. And the Kings obviously have tied the, the season, we tied the season right. series with the Warriors, but we beat the Lakers. I understand, Four, oh, yeah. but, but but what I'm saying is the Kings right now are in eighth. There is If the Kings lose tomorrow, we might be talking about a Kings that have to not only win one play-in game, but two, yeah. okay? So do, do not lose that. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to go back to something I've been talking about. If the Kings end up ninth or tenth and lose that first game, I know the owner. And I'm just telling you, this is not going to be a pleasant environment to go to work the following day and for the following weeks. This is going to be awful for them, assuming that they maintain their jobs. So do not underestimate the pressure that all of those people in this building are under if this team ends up 9 or 10 and loses that first game and their season is over. Okay, That would be a horrible scenario for the people in that building. 
Yeah, uh, terrible. And also for the people who think uh, Mike Brown doesn't know how to coach, just remember on terrible Cleveland teams minus LeBron James, he still won 60 games, got to Eastern Conference Finals and to an NBA Finals. That, that you know he he's done a lot in this league. This is not his first rodeo. All right, Condog, I'm gonna test you right now for a VIP pass to the King's Court brunch at Bennett's on May 4th. How many times has Mike Brown had a team that has been the best team in the NBA defending the three ball? Oh, man, as just a head coach, like not assistant. Head coach. Um. His team, his season, starting as a head coach. Uh, I'm going to say zero. Oh, so close. So close. Two. Two. I knew it was a low number. I knew. Good guess, though. You know a lot about basketball. Condog, we appreciate the call tonight, buddy. Good night, everyone. All right, Condog. See you, buddy. <sighs> I, 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 uh, all right, so it's my turn to do a read because you were just outstanding. Oh, does that mean I get to grade you? On, uh, you do get to grade me. Now, you know this, but but the folks don't know this, that when I do this read from Blazona Development, it requires mm. you know some fast hands and putting yes. up the calusasunrise.com. But, hey, here's the deal. It's Sunrise Ooh. Landing, and it is in Calusa. They have six models to choose from, beautiful models, various sized lots, and remember, no Melaroos, no homeowners, really good access to some of the major arteries like I-5 and Highway 20. And all you need to do is go to calusasunrise.com and check out Sunrise Landing, this project from Blazona Development. Sunrise Landing, check it Woo! out today by going and hitting the website, calusasunrise.com. That is Sunrise Landing from Lazona development. Come on. You are so good at spreading that out at the end. You just get the most out of it. I almost gave you a couple landmines just to play yeah. with you. But then yes. when you're like, you know what? I got to make the hands move and do the screens. I'm like, you know what? Let's do this. 9.2, Grant. I learned oh. something from that. I, I learned something that. from that. I You've got a time that. in mind when you do those, don't you? You have a time in mind for each one. You know, I honestly don't, Whoa. but um, when I used to do live reads and I had to make them either a 30 or a 60, very yeah. often I, I would not time them. And most times I was within one or two seconds of the time that I had to hit. So you, after you do it for a while, you kind of sure. get an idea. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. Hey, Jay Cliff, I see your comment. We're going to come to that in a second. But first, Zach, welcome into If You Don't Like That with Grant Napier. Uh, do you guys even care to see this team in the playoffs? Do I care to what? See the see team it. in the playoffs. Because like, it's just not a big deal to me anymore. When Especially did that change? Denver. When did that change for you? I mean, just like as like over the last month, as like Grant says, like, oh, like what makes me think like this team is going to all of a sudden turn it on? So it's like what makes me think that in the playoffs that they're just going to completely transform into a whole different team. Yeah, the only way that could happen is if to get Malik Monk back. I mean, that, that would be a huge lift if he could come back, assuming the Kings would win the play in and get into uh, the playoffs. That that would that would give uh, fans a, a much more confidence. Because realistically, if they match up with Denver, I don't see them winning the game. They'll probably They're not beating Denver. They, they they won't win a game against Denver. Uh, I I I I agree. I I don't think they'll even like get within fifteen points or closer. If if Denver's healthy, Denver will sweep the Kings and at the very worst lose one game. But I don't know. It's just kind of a depressing evening for me right now with the way they played. Yeah. But that's why I have. It. All right, Zach. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Appreciate the call. Uh, you know what? I'm going to put this up really quick because I want to get your role or get your answer on this. The Kings are not doing a lot of pick and roll right now. Is it a refusal or is it a personnel issue, Napes? I, I don't think De'Aaron Fox wants to do the pick and roll. I mean, he gets the freaking ball and he doesn't even look at setting up the pick and roll. I mean, it's it's like he, he it's not even in his mind. I don't I mean. I'm trying to think in the second half. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Yeah. I don't recall it happening one time. 
I don't recall much pick and roll tonight. The one thing I'll say about Domas and um, Fox when they run it, Fox rarely gets downhill on the pick and roll. It's usually the yep. lateral movement. It's that sidestep mm -hmm. that the guys like to do. And you see Malik Monk, that's what he's really good at with Domas. So cuts both Much ways. better. It's a different uh, type of an offense when those two are on the floor. You know, Fox knows that he can get to any spot he wants on the floor. We see it mm -hmm. all the time. It, we, even tonight when the Kings were down big, he got the ball accelerated. He get, gets into the paint, fades away mid-range, or gets all the way to the cup. He knows he can do that at any time. I mean, he did it tonight. I mean, he really – Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But 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 there needs to be more than just that, you know? Well, you know what I'm seeing, Napes? Teams are starting to zone the Kings a little more. Yes. They're not scared of the three ball. And, in fact, one thing that we haven't talked about, Napes, is it looked like the Pelicans were going under screens to start the game on the Kings. They were. What's that they tell were. you? Yeah, there you go. Well, again, and you can't do that with Kevin Herter on the floor, and you can't do that with Malik Monk on the floor, but they're not playing right now. They're hurt. So, listen, no disrespect to Keon Ellis, but you are always going to try to go under. Now, if he's getting hot like he did against Oklahoma City, then you change your defensive strategy. But Fox, same thing. You're going under on the screen. You're going to let them shoot the threes. Yeah, you know? Reggie Reggie, and Kevin kind of hit on that tonight. Yes, they're they like De'Aaron's threes, the – increase in them and it, it, that is going to be a big point of contention to me in the offseason about how this team moves forward and we hit it yesterday on grant and jerry but are you actually missing more by not going to the rim and not getting the fouls versus getting that extra point with the threes it's a great question and you also have to understand i mean how often do we come on the post game and we talk about the opposing player a big player, an important player fouling out. It rarely happens because the Kings don't get their opponents in fouls. Yeah, out. you're absolutely right. They are, when they do, they get to the line a lot, but they don't yes. force that whatsoever. So good point by you. Ready to go overseas? Are you ready? I'm ready to go to the I'm, man. I'm guessing we're not going to have a very happy Baki, but we bring him in anyways. What's up, buddy? Baki all the way from Serbia. Hello, Baki. What's up, guys? What's up? So every the, time, the Pelicans every... are up. They're up five games to love on the Kings in this season. That's who's up. Yeah, one more game and first set Pelicans. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Let's bring so what's some... up, Baki? Well, nothing. Nothing new. I mean... Uh, I just wonder whenever whenever people talk about Mike Brian, uh, Mike Brown, uh, somehow we wake up that uh, defensive call for him. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the one who who is uh, who's gonna tell him what to do. I mean, who am I? But uh, I don't know. Uh, a lot of questions for me and for a lot of people. Uh, what? What kind of stuff we are doing in in our defense? Okay, offense is offense. Okay, but when when okay, you have you have uh, tonight. If you if you have a quarter of thirty minutes, Zion will give you one hundred points, and nobody can stop him. Why? Because you. Do, I mean, okay, they are better than us, and I have nothing to to say about it. Okay, we're gonna congratulate them. You are better. Go on, have a great playoffs. But uh, at least try to do something. Uh, not only staring at the guy who is beating you up, like like Grant say he's toying with with people. And what what you do, you put you put uh, who was guarding who was guarding uh, Zion in the second half. It was it was Barnes, right? Yes. Yeah, well, a little bit of everybody. Keon picked him up a little bit in transition. A Keon, little bit, but but yeah. mostly was was uh, Barnes, and he could do nothing. I mean, you're the coach. You have more guys, defenders on on your stuff. So do something. Okay, first first half you you put you put double on on uh, Valentunis. I mean, doubling guy. Why? I don't know. When you when you need to double somebody, you miss it. 
when you when you when it's awful to 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 double somebody like you do with Luca, like you do with uh, I don't know uh, Brunson, you're doubling. So now you're doubling uh, the guy who is doesn't need to be doubled, and in the second half you do nothing with Zion. Okay, try to double him. Try to put somebody else uh, to guard him. Try any, just try something. Not well. I'll tell you one thing: you, you, uh, Kings fans, better pray that the Pelicans end up sixth and don't lose tomorrow to the Warriors and lose at home to the Lakers and have the Suns win tomorrow and win against Minnesota and pass them in the standings. Because you think Kings fans want to see this team again, which still is a, a is a possibility. That would be a nightmare scenario. Can you can you imagine <clears throat> playing game in New Orleans and Kings beating Pelicans after five love? <laughs> they, they'd be lucky if they stay within thirty points against this team. Yeah, but that would be the story. Yeah, that but would be a, that, I, would, that, I, I would, that would not be the story. That would be a miracle. Miracle, right? <laughs> you, you, that would you be a miracle. The, you took the word from my mouth. Okay, so. Uh, I don't think maybe they maybe they can lose tomorrow because they are a little tired maybe, but I don't see them losing the game with Lakers in home court. I don't I don't see it. Pelicans. I don't they either. Will, they will win against Lakers one hundred percent. Well, the Lakers still may not have anything to play for in that game, so a lot depends on well, whether well, they it's have, a game well, they for have, them or not. They will beat uh, tomorrow Memphis. And they will be very hot in that last game. But yeah, we'll see. Hey, you know what? If you're a Sacramento fan right now, you probably don't care about any of that. All you care about is are you able to win a game next week? Okay, that you have to win in order to stay alive. That that's it. I I I think even Kings fans tomorrow they probably don't care. They want to beat Portland just to make sure you don't slide to nine or ten. But other than that, what the hell difference does it make? And I think Ryan made yeah. a very good point. Uh, I'm not so sure I don't just rest everybody tomorrow and concede the game and then put all my chips in to beat Portland to guarantee me no worse than eight. I, I'm really thinking that, to be honest with you. I, I, I'd i be okay with that scenario. Well, I, I don't see Kings at number seven, really, if you ask me. I mean, uh, winning against Phoenix tomorrow – for me, would be a big surprise. Big yeah, but one. they're still not going to go. They would still be behind Phoenix in the standings, even yeah. if they win tomorrow. And I'm with you. I don't think they're going to win tomorrow. I actually think they're going to get blown out tomorrow. I think they're going to. I think it's going to be another Dallas game uh, in the second half. I think the Kings are going to lose by a large number tomorrow. Yeah, the problem is that Golden State will will definitely go up, and I don't know. I I think. Number nine or number 10, if you ask me. Well, you're either going to be playing the Warriors or the Lakers if you are nine or 10. And then if you win that game, you still have to play another game. It's not like you win that game and you're in the playoffs. Of you course, then play you the loser go, of seven, eight. Probably you're going to go to Phoenix. So you're going to probably. fly to Phoenix and you must win uh, in Phoenix to confront Denver Nuggets. So. And, and, and here's the other issue. We talked about this, and Ryan brought this up. I have no idea about Fox's ankle, but if Fox's ankle is an issue, this is going to be a quick, quick play-in uh, tournament for the Kings. They're, they're, without, without Fox being 100%, I give them zero chance or 5% chance. I can't give them a zero. That would be unfair. I give them a very, very small percentage of winning against any of the teams we just mentioned if Fox is anything less than 100%. Not even small well, Not Grant, good. Grant, if you don't have De'Aaron Fox, you, this team and Bucky, you as well, I want to get your take. They only had three distributors to begin with, in my yep. eyes. You had De'Aaron Fox, yep. Domas, so I don't need to name all of them off, Monk. And now you maybe just have Domas in an injured Fox. Can't do so it. that's they, they why the shot. Killed. Yeah, yep. and we talk about the so shot selection. That's why we hound on yeah. it. Did you? Because it's all in one person's control to a degree. Or did you guys, people. did you guys see that that uh, mistake by Mike Brown as well in the first what half, uh, bringing bringing uh, uh, Duarte to playing the, uh, such a, I mean, how many? You mean, you mean no, no, you mean no, 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 you mean Colby Jones, Colby sorry, Jones. Colby, sorry, 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 Colby Jones. 
And then he realized the mistake, so he'd bring uh, Damian Mitchell, and uh, everything was okay. Well, no, he he brought in Davion and Colby at the same time. They brought him in. Was it, was yeah, it the same were, time, Ryan? Was it yeah, the they, same time they came Davion in? Davion and Colby oh, okay. came in pretty much at the same time. I believe I could be completely okay. wrong. I think no, they I think checked he, in at the same time. I don't think yeah, so. You I know think what? You're, you're wrong. I don't know for sure, but I think I you're think probably was, right. No, maybe I'm wrong, but I think Kobe was there and he made a few mistakes and few no, 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 no. Davion was in the game at that point. I have it in my notes. Davion yep. and Kobe, I've got okay. it right here. They okay, they okay. came on shortly after each other. Kobe made the mistakes. That's why Chris Duarte in the second half got those minutes, but he didn't do much with them, unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, he saw where where was the the mistake, so he put him out. Then was then was better. I mean, first first half you you have great Barnes. Barnes realizes what what is the point of uh, not only shooting trees but uh, entering the paint very very hard, and mm -hmm. it was it was okay. He he scored maybe 12, 13 in the first half. So I thought it's going to be a recipe for the second one. But then Zion killed the third quarter and said goodbye. Well, I'm, I'm going to look at tomorrow night. Um, I know what I would do, but I'm just going to go on record right now. I think Fox will play tomorrow, and I think he'll play 30-plus minutes and give it everything he has. That's my, that's my prediction for tomorrow. Okay, without without knowing, I obviously have no way of knowing what the deal is, but I think he'll start tomorrow and I think he'll play 35 minutes. There you go. Um, by the way, just point of clarification, Davion and Colby both entered the game at the 524 at the mark in the first quarter. Yeah. Great job. Bucky, always a pleasure, my friend. Pleasure was mine. Good stuff. Appreciate Tell your daughter you. hello and uh, holy moly, Jim Bob Bowley for us. <laughs> Maybe Thanks. in a half an hour, half an hour. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. Good. Hey, I want to tell you about Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital. They are located in Auburn. They serve the Foothills, Roseville, and the greater Sacramento area. Now, remember, they're full service dentistry, surgery, wellness care, and they're dedicated to urgent care. When your urgent. pet needs to be seen, they're available. Just remember that. When your pet needs to be seen, they are available. They have advanced internal medicine, right? Full surgical care, spay neuter packages to advanced orthopedic procedures such as ACL, fracture repairs, dentistry, and much more. They've got the most modern technology, and they're very proud of their pain management protocols for maximizing faster recovery for their surgical and dental patients that is gold country veterinarian hospital and again the key here rhino yes. when your pet needs to be seen they are available they are available and you mentioned the easier things they do orthopedic surgery teeth cleaning i mean i've learned more anatomy with them sponsoring the show than i ever did in college so. amen you know what? Uh, I'm with you. And I took, I told you, I took um, yeah. in my minor, I had to take a class in anatomy and it was the most painful class I've ever taken in my entire life. First of all, it was at 830 in the morning uh, in the winter quarter on the uh, other side of campus. And if you know about Bowling Green in the winter, uh, it was brutal. And I missed a couple of classes and my prof, very cool guy, he'd gone to Texas. He was a big Texas football fan. And he said to me, he goes, listen, you're struggling in this class and I'm not going to give you any breaks if you're not here every day. And I'm like, mm. I understand. And I got it. And I was there every day. And then with about three weeks left to go, I talked to him. I said, I'm not going to pass it. I'm not going to be able to do this. I said, this is five credits. I go, I'm switching this class uh, from a letter grade to pass fail. Yes. And, he, he go, and I said, what do I need to do uh, to pass? And he told me, and I told you, I'll never forget when I walked in the class one day and they had all these cats, all yeah. right, that we had to dissect, right? And I, I'm, I, I'd, I mean, I can't do that, you know. So I'm sitting there, you know, smelling the, 
formaldehyde or whatever the hell you call that stuff. It was disgusting. <sighs> and, you know, I'm literally at 8.30 in the morning after being out until 4 in the morning the night before. I'm trying, uh -oh. not, to, I'm trying not to vomit, okay? Oh, while I'm boy. With, uh, no, really. I'm literally <laughs> trying not to throw up as I got these dead cats all over the damn room. And we have to, like, you know, I, I'm like, this, this is just brutal, you know? And anyway, long story short, uh, I passed the class. And I actually put a lot of effort in leading up to the final. I, I don't even remember what my final grade was, but uh, he, he was very cool. And I told That's him, I go, awesome. this is my minor. I'm going to try. I'm going to be here every day. I'm going to put the effort in. I go, but I, and I told him, I go, Hey, I can't, I can't dissect the cats. I go, come on. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a sports broadcaster. Okay. I'm going to be yeah. a sports announcer. I, I don't need to know what the hell is going on. I don't, I, I don't need to know about a dead cat when I'm talking about, you know, I'm announcing a hockey game or a football yeah. game. I go, I, I don't need to do that. Okay. All I need to do is graduate. <laughs> That's all. Just get me out of here. So I, I was able to, I was able to pull that off. Well, luckily for you, he got you warmed up for gold country. Now you know some of the stuff, but my napes, the labs, that used to be the worst in college. Good on oh. you for getting through that. And good on the professor. Not yeah. every professor in college does that he, when you go to a big university. He was so cool. But anyway, so you talk about gold country. You know, a couple of days ago, they diagnosed and treated a dog with pancreatitis. They did a C-section <laughs> on an Australian shepherd that had 13 puppies. They removed a cartilage defect from the shoulder of a dog. They removed bladder stones from a cat. Let me tell you something. I had a chance to remove some bladder stones on a dead cat, and I was like, get me the hell out of here. No way. I'm not touching that. No, no, no. Look Leave me alone. I don't want to touch the cat. I don't want it. Get me. There's no way in the world I'm, I'm picking my little instruments, and I'm like going and digging into a dead cat because I got to see where the muscles are. I don't care. Don't what are you ever going to do with it? Yeah. Why I, do you have a dead cat? Why do you have a dead cat? And the teacher actually, I remember him saying to me, he goes, listen, he goes, you know, we could have had a cadaver in here and we could uh -huh. have, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I get, I get the cats. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Cats are good. Okay, but I go, I'm trying not to throw up here. You know, yeah. I'm trying literally at 845 in the morning with the temperature at 10 below zero outside. And I just walked 25 minutes across campus with the wind chill at minus 40. And I, I've only, I, I, I'm trying. I'm trying not to throw up here in class. That's my. Yeah, that's it, my goal for the day. In Napes, it's not a class where you can warm up with a cup of coffee and get situated. No, it, it's just. You know that I've never had a cup of coffee in my I life. I do know that. I do. Yeah. It's crazy to me. All right. So enough of my nonsense in college. <laughs> Forty plus years ago, do the Kings, in your opinion, bounce back tomorrow? I don't know if I can answer that. I need more information on De'Aaron Fox. I, right, I guess gonna, for, sake of, for sake of conversation, yeah. let's say he plays and there's not any limitation on him. It's not affecting the way he plays. Yeah, I don't think they do. I, I, I just don't. I think that they, they're they smart enough to know what their best chances are. And I, I just, it doesn't feel right. Grant, second night of a back-to-back -back and Phoenix is resting. You've said that for a week. They're here in Sacramento. How about yourself? I think the Kings are going to get blown out tomorrow. I think it's a uh, the third game in four nights. By the way, it's the third game in four nights for Phoenix. The difference is they didn't play tonight. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to pounce on Sacramento. They have an opening. And I think it's going to be a long night for the Kings with or without De'Aaron Fox. Yeah, the only chance that the Kings have is getting some of those guys in foul trouble because Phoenix isn't super deep. I mean, some of the guys, Royce O'Neal, who they got at the deadline, um, and then Isaiah Thomas, who knows if he's going to really get any minutes. But um, you could get them into trouble there, Grant, and maybe force a little bit of pressure. But can the Kings keep anything up for 48 minutes? All right, I want to give you an opportunity to answer this question, Rhino. Grant, I want to ask you a sincere question. In Indiana, they gave Sabonis as a power forward a chance until they realized it wasn't working. Domos performed great in the regular season, but no playoff success. Yeah, um, I, I think he's perfectly stuck in the middle. If this was, if Domos was playing in the NBA when his dad did, he'd be perfectly fine at center. Mm -hmm. um, but now with the tweeners and the guys that shoot threes, Domos is the odd guy out for his size in his game. All right. Uh, it's a very interesting question. Tomorrow, it's the Pelicans. Uh, or excuse me. Thank goodness it's not the Pelicans. It's the Suns. 
who are now 47 and 33. The Kings are two games behind them. The Suns are still fighting for a spot number six. All right. They are still fighting. They are a game back of New Orleans for that spot. I want to tell you about Fosters and Paws. They are a group of passionate animal advocates. They're looking for donors, fosters, and to adopt. They have puppies available right now for adoption. You go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt, and you can get yourself a puppy. I also love the fact they work with families and young people to teach them the lifelong benefits of having a pet. They do great work. Again, they're very passionate about what they do. They're animal advocates, and they work primarily with dogs and shelters. And right now they have puppies available for adoption. Go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. Well, I guess we should wrap it up because it was not a good night. And there's another game tomorrow. And uh, the Kings right now, to me, you know, their main goal is not to fall to nine or 10, Ryan, because if you're nine or 10, you have to play. First of all, you made a good point last week, and I had not really thought about this. Not only do you have to go into the play-in, you got to play while your first-round opponent, if you get that far, is resting. Yes. Okay? And if you have to play an extra game because you lose the 7-8 or you're 9-10 and you have to play two anyway, now all of a sudden you have to play two games and then travel if you win the second game. And in all likelihood, you know, you're you're going to have to travel – Far Minnesota, mm-hmm. then, you know, I mean, it's not like yeah. you get on the flight and you're there in 45 minutes. So all of these things work against you, which is why it's also important to fall no worse than eight, which is where the Kings are now. Yeah, and it especially works against you. And I know some of the other teams had a tough coming home stretch, but Grant, that last road trip of the season for the Kings, the East Brutal. Coast stretch, and then possibly Awful. having to travel like you just laid out, uh, that's Terrible. a tough ask for any team. All right. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you very much. Don't forget tomorrow, pregame show, Ryan and Sacktown will have it. Halftime show with Jerry Reynolds and postgame show right here. Appreciate the calls. Appreciate the support. Uh, it means a lot to us. And Amen. even when we have to do shows on tough nights like this, you make it worth it. So thank you very much. We'll be back tomorrow. Try to get through the rest of your evening. Bye-bye.